What's up, fam? Welcome back to our channel. My name is Tim. This is my beautiful wife, Pauline, and you're tuning in to another episode of the W Podcast, where you get wisdom in the world with the... Wheeler. Hey, so we are so excited this week. We have an amazing topic, and something that was really inspired from a podcast we did recently, and I think it's a topic that needs to be touched on some more, and that's the whole concept of trusting God with your dating life. Mm. Because... It doesn't sound practical, mm. but there are some practical things that we want to share with you in this video to help you be able to really walk with God in your dating life. Because at the end of the day, if you want to have a godly relationship, that means you don't want to have it without God by your side, I would assume. Right. So that's something we really want to get into. And one of the things that we want to talk about is... The whole concept of idolizing marriage. That's something that I feel like is starting to be talked about a lot more. One of the dangers with making marriage an idol is it could cause you to stay in a relationship longer than you should. Yeah. Because there's fear of, well, is this the only person that I'm ever going to get? Like, if I dump this person, even though God's telling me to, am I ever going to be in a relationship again? Right. And that's something that we want to help you with. So check this clip out. I really think we want to be christians that fear god and that's where um you know proverbs tells us it's the beginning of all wisdom is is fearing the lord and that's what the only thing we should fear is like and it's even not, that fear is reverence right it's that. not like oh i'm afraid that god's gonna punish me but it's more of like god i don't want to miss out on what you are doing or what you want to do in my life because of a relationship that seems like a lot of us really if we're being honest idolize marriage and we feel like our worth and our purpose and everything is tied up and our and being married and marriage does help with a lot of things it does help with your purpose and it is a, such a great blessing but only if we put it in its proper place and we definitely cannot put it above god and if god ever tells you to do something you need to do it <laughs> and it's not even a matter of like you're gonna get in trouble like you're a little kid with your parents but it's more of like you know it's only going to hurt you in the end if you don't listen um and you know you're delaying certain blessings and breakthroughs in your life which we don't want so if that is helpful a helpful way to think about it it's just another way to think about you know like kind of giving your heart in the right place of like god I, f I fear you. I revere you more than anything else. And if you're going to tell me to do this, then I'm going to do it. I don't need to understand God. Your ways are higher than my ways. And I don't care if I'm crying myself to sleep for the next six months. This is what I'm going to do. And I want to have my own peace knowing that um, I didn't ignore your word. I didn't ignore what you told me to do. Because, you know, some people say it like this, that, like, whatever voices you listen to are the ones that you feed and those are the ones that get louder so if you want the lord to continue to speak to you you need to listen to him um not that he's going to stop talking to you if you disobey but it's going to be harder for you to hear him if you're just constantly listening to yourself um or the enemy i don't know um but yeah i think also if all those things maybe said were right about potentially what your current boyfriend may or may not be going through with his family and his own like kind of inner work he needs to do you don't want to delay that you know if you really love him and you want the best for him um clearly i mean i think it is pretty obvious that any man um that is above 20 <laughs> and has been dating someone for seven years um with no signs of marriage no talk of marriage has something going on um that he does need to work on and if he was going to get better with it by with you by his side he would have gotten better by now so i think that you know you all probably aren't good for each other even though you are looking at him as a good man but what's a good man i don't know um, you know we're not really going to go into that whole definition and debate but i think to start to look at the positive things that could come of you obeying god um and talk yourself into it until you do it um and also tell a friend about what the lord has told you i know this is an anonymous you know survey or questionnaire that we take um, but you definitely need to tell your friends so that they can keep you accountable and make sure you are continuing to walk along the path that god has for you because if you keep this to yourself it's going to be easier and easier for you to ignore it and for you to disobey so that's a practical thing uh we need you to do to be obedient yeah absolutely so 
remember, if you're in this situation where God is asking you to give up something, or you're in a situation where you've been in a relationship for too long and you know that you should end it, but you're scared to end it, whether it's because you're 40 and you're not sure if you're gonna date again or never get married, or you're just scared of losing someone who you feel like really knows you and trust and someone you can trust and you're never sure if you'll find somebody else who will trust you like that. We gotta remember to put our trust in God. Yeah. And I just wanna read this verse to close out. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do and he will show you which path to take. God is not gonna leave you hanging. He's not gonna leave you wondering what's gonna happen next. He'll show you what path to take. But first you gotta put your trust in him and try not to lean like the Bible said on your own understanding and try to figure out, well, if I do this, then what's gonna happen here? Or, or this will happen. You don't know what's gonna happen. Just trust that God's got your back. He'll make your path straight. All right, we hope you enjoyed that clip. Remember, it is only our job to fear God, not to fear man, not to fear a situation, but to trust that he's going to help us, even if he's asking us to do something that's scary. Yeah. Now, this next clip, we're going to say something that most Christians won't. Mm -hmm. It's hard to keep God at the center of your relationship because your flesh always wants to do something opposite of God's sure. will. And especially, there's something about dating that brings that flesh out. Boy, tell you, there's something about dating that brings that flesh out. But you got to learn to submit that flesh to God. And we want to walk you through how do you keep God at the center of your relationship practically, yeah. even when that flesh is acting crazy. So check this out. <laughs> it's not easy to keep God involved in your relationship. And for me, one of the reasons that wasn't, it, I did it. But one of the reasons it, I could see somebody having struggles with it is because, one, you need to keep an open dialogue with God with every step. Yeah. So, God, should I go on this date? Should I go on another date? Yeah. Lord, we've been talking for two weeks. What do you think about this? Yeah, it, checking in with God on the pace is huge. Like, how one, of, going? one of the hardest things for me when we were dating was especially as we started getting further along and the light starts to turn into love but you're still just dating because we dated and were engaged for two and a half years so you know depending on what you think that can be a long time and it was tough because i would listen to sermons or listen to marriage seminars that are talking to dating people and be like this isn't your wife don't treat her like your wife you yeah. can't do this. You can't do that. And there's all these restrictions. And I respected them and agreed with them. But at the same time, there was something in me that just was annoyed at the fact Don't that I can't do. there was things that I couldn't do with this person that I loved. And it's interesting because in the sight of God, you're not married, obviously. Mm -hmm. But it's tough when you're so used to calling this person my girl or my girlfriend. And there, you have this feeling of ownership attachment, attachment yeah. but you really don't have any true attachment in the sight of god or any true ownership for lack of a better word and that's something that you have to wrestle with because you don't want that feeling to draw you to move too fast or on the other end you don't want your feelings in a relationship to cause you to go too slow of maybe you're starting to feel things for somebody that you never felt before yeah, and that causes you to get scared and you're like hold on I don't know if I want to get married because I saw how my parents marriage worked out or I saw how my uncles worked out or whatever it may be or I never seen a marriage period I don't know if I right. can do it and then you start getting fear and you want to be mindful of that and that's why it's so good to be able to involve God in the process because one the Bible says cast all your cares on him because he cares like, we serve a God who cares about every aspect of our life. So you can share your fears with him. You can share your desires to move faster. Like, that happened a lot of times because, as you all know, me and Pauline were, well, I was in college. Pauline had just graduated when we started dating. And I was not in a place financially to be nobody's husband. So that caused our process to be longer than we would have liked. So I had to often rely on God talk to God, like, I feel like this woman wants me to propose, and I Are you can't... trying to put pressure on you? 
You know. Oh, was... wow. Okay, that's cool. I don't want to say that you put pressure on me, but I felt pressure. Okay. And it could have been because you were putting some pressure, but I think a lot of it was because I was still young and learning how to communicate and lead and all of that, all of those things. So I felt the pressure and also just learning you mm-hmm. because you can be sometimes very like aggressive, mm-hmm. but, and I'm, I mean this respectfully. Mm-hmm. respectfully. <laughs> Saying that always makes it feel, you know, so much better. I'm the sure. aggression that I feel isn't always necessarily how aggressive you really feel about a situation. And I know it doesn't really make sense, but it <laughs> yeah, does, you said anyway. It does to me. Okay. So, <laughs> but I think all of those things that will come in a relationship, those are all opportunities for you to take it to God. But then also, when I felt that pressure, I talked to my dad, I talked to my pastor, I talked to whoever would listen, and they were like, "Bro, you need to graduate. You're not in a position." Right, and they made you kind of feel better about the situation. Yeah, it made me feel better. Like, all right, I just got to handle my business and eventually when the timing is right this will happen right and i just had to calm myself down mm-hmm. and that may be the case for some of you you need to talk to somebody yeah. whether you're scared or whether you're too excited because just because you have the money to get married in yeah. six months doesn't mean you should like yeah. you don't even really know this person yet like yeah. there's more there's some more conversations that need to be had yeah. There's some more environments you need to see this person in. Yeah. Because you think just because you see him at church, you think you know them. No, 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 no. I knew Pauline for over a year before we ever started talking or dating. And most of that was in a church setting. Mm-hmm. And there was one side of Pauline in the church. And I'm not even talking ratchet. I'm just talking personality. There was one side of Pauline that I saw leader, mature, Refined, refined, dignified, dignified. Wow! And then I had the opportunity to work a summer job with Pauline, where she was the lead manager at that job. Let's yep. give her her props. Yep. And I saw all those qualities there too, which is good. I was your boss because your boss's boss. You want to make sure that what you see in one setting carries over to another setting, but. I did see some things that oh I didn't see at church. I'm not going to go into detail. Yeah, but also that added to your perspective of me. It if you let me away. finish, they, that aggressiveness, here we go. Yeah, because you're trying to paint no, no, Let me finish. Please, thank you. You want them to think badly about me. Not badly, but. Is that how you really feel? No, but I just don't know what. Go ahead. You done? Oh, is you done or is you finished? Ooh, cutting me off. Lord have mercy. So, as I was saying, I saw all of those same things at the summer job. But then I also saw a side of Pauline that was more silly. That I had no idea she had that side to her. This is like unscripted. I feel like I'm a podcast listener right now. I'm just like, what are you going to say next? Yeah, I can't tell you a podcast listener because you're talking a whole lot. <laughs> Let me finish. You Goodness gracious. You anyway. Woo. So... I and I wasn't planning to say this, so this is all hopefully Clearly. Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. Um, so I saw some sides to Pauline that was honestly good for me to see mm. because I don't think I would have been interested or even considered dating her if I only saw the church side of her. And I know for a lot of you, you're not going to be able to have the opportunity to see somebody in a work setting, but maybe you can get a group of friends to go out and go to yeah. bowling or Dave and Buster's or a concert or whatever makes sense for your context. And then you can have an opportunity to see them in their setting. Maybe it can be her and her friends. Mm. Like somehow you find, cause it's different bringing your girlfriend or your boyfriend into your friend group. And it's a whole nother thing seeing yeah. them in their friend you definitely group need to do both. where they're comfortable and you yeah. really see, Oh, that's how you like talk. Meeting each other's family. Like they're, you're going to act different with their family Versus how they're gonna act with your family. Are you good now? Because you was really interrupted. Are, are I'm you, do so, you feel? I deeply and sincerely apologize for interrupting. Yeah, do you trust me? Do you do you think I'm just gonna air out your? You're right. Bad I should have known better. Six years in, I should have I should have trusted more. This is what healthy conflict looks like. But hopefully. This is me dealing with my. I'm working on releasing control. Hopefully, you can see. You know, the, this is real live. We're not editing this out. It's okay to have conflict. It's okay to. But is that conflict? A little bit. Oh. I was a little, I was annoyed a little bit. I'm not going to hold you. I mean, yeah. But I still love you. I love. 
I still like you too. All right, fam. We hope that clip encouraged you that you know it is possible to keep God at the center of your relationship, even when it's hard, because you know it's worth it at the end of the day. Kind of beginning with the end in mind is something that's really important that. with that. And the last clip we have is, do you really believe that God is leading you down the best path for your love life? You've been single for six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Do you really believe that God is ordering your steps? Because if you don't, it's going to be really hard to continue to have faith yeah. and continue to believe. And honestly, just to trust God. Yeah. It's going to be hard to trust God if you don't believe that he's ordering your steps. And that even if you're in a situation that you don't like, that God is actually for you and is still happy and pleased with where you are because he's orchestrating every move. Now, that sounds like super pie in the sky Christian stuff. Mm -hmm. It doesn't sound practical. But in this clip, we're going to break down what this looks like practically, how to live this out. Check it out. That's something that you need to remember. Like, as silly as that story is, like, please don't forget that God is ordering your steps. And I, I know for some of you, you're, it's not a job that you're hoping to get or trying to make happen in your life. But it's probably you want to be in a dating relationship. And it can be frustrating because it's like, God, I went on the first date. God, we dated for six months. Like, I thought that was the person that didn't work out. And I think it's easy to get frustrated, but we just have to remember that God is the one that's ordering our steps. He's the one that's working things out. So even the things that we thought were going to work out don't. Right. They can. And also, another thing we want to highlight is how you never know who God has in your life and how God will want to use them. Not just the fact that Pauline got me a job, but at that time, we were not remotely close to being interested in each other romantically. As you can see, I was still tripping on <laughs> by ex. She saw me as someone below her. You know. brow. So there was no way we thought we'd be here helping right. other people learn how to date. But God knew the whole time. And God actually used that job yes. for us to be able to see different sides of each other yes. that helped us be open to dating. And some of you may be discouraged right now because you're like, God, there's no options. There's nobody here. And God's looking at you like, you have no idea the person that you cool with right. is the person that I got for you. It's just not time. Yeah. And I think that's hard because God sits outside of time. Yeah. But we in time. So we're like, God, like it's been five years, six years, seven years. Why am I not in a relationship? And you just have to trust God. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. And yeah, that job went on. Like you said, we got to get to know each other better and seeing, because we don't really know each other in church. So seeing each other in professional, more professional setting, you know, that's where actually Tim learned that I did have like a fun and silly side of me. I thought she was just, flash annoying. I thought she was just a very professional, like get this done. Like I don't laugh. Type. <laughs> I don't even know. Yeah. I smile. Yeah, which is not true. So I want to. I want to read the verse Psalms thirty seven twenty three to twenty four. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. This is the part I want you to get. He delights in every detail of their lives. That includes your dating life. Because some people don't think God cares about dating. Mm -hmm. God cares about dating, and He, he delights does. in yeah. that detail, which means take great pleasure. Though they stumble, they will never fall, for the Lord holds them by the hand. You may have stumbled in your dating relationship. You may have done some things you're not proud of. God still got you. God still has a purpose and a plan for your life, your love life specifically. So if you don't take nothing else from this story time, please remember that God's got your back. God is for you, even if it doesn't look like it right now. Yeah. God's got somebody out there for you. You just got to keep taking it one day at a time. Right. All right, y'all, that's it. We hope that these clips encouraged you and helped you feel like you have some practical keys to be able to go out and trust God in your dating life. Because at the end of the day, if we are not trusting the Lord with any area of our life, we're going to set ourselves up to potentially make some bad decisions because we're going to start to do things outside of our own timing. Yeah. That's how Abraham gets a son. That's not Isaac. He gets Ishmael because he said, I know God said he was going to bless me with a kid, but now I don't see a kid and I'm getting older. I got to take this into my own hands. Right. And how did that end up? A mess. So trust God. Trust that he's for you even when it takes a long time mm -hmm. because you know that in the end, 
His ways are better than your ways. Yeah. We'll see y'all next week on the W Podcast. Bye. Thanks for watching this video. To get more Christian relationship advice, subscribe to our channel. And make sure you check out our other videos as well.